let's talk about Veracrypt. So we've installed the application on our computer, and this computer is a macOS operating system running 13.2.1, which is the Ventura version. So in this case, we've installed the software and we've opened it. Now we're going to follow the steps in the documentation to create an encrypted volume on an external hard drive that can be stored in a safe location. We will start by clicking create volume. And in this case, we're going to read what our two options are. So take a moment to do that. And because we have a non-system drive, like a flash drive, we're going to choose the second option and click next. Now, we never want to use, if you're using Veracrypt, unless it's for testing, never do the standard volume. Always do the hidden volume, right? Just assume your adversary is going to get access to this. Even if it's stored in like the best bank vault or vault in the best, safest location. So now we're going to choose our device. And in this case, we have this for testing flash drive here. And we've chosen the never save history box that's clicked by default, but we're going to unclick it and let it remember it. That's fine. Uh, and we'll read through this warning. So take a moment to do that. And we, we do want to format it. So make sure nothing's there. And here are our outer volume encryption options. So for our outer volume, we'll still choose a cascade of ciphers. So in this case, we're going to do AES, two fish and serpent. All of these have 256 bit keys and they are all mutually independent. And of course, this is our outer volume and it's the non-hidden volume. We can do a benchmark here. And this is going to take a lot of RAM. So we can see which one's fastest and which one is slowest. And you know, when you when you get these in a cascade and you got a lot of data, it's it's gonna take some time. You can see those decrypt times go down. So if you're trying to go really fast, use the top one AES, and if you really care about security, choose your best mix of cascading ciphers. Note that the maximum password length here is 128 characters, and you're going to be wanting to use a, a key pass database for your password manager, which is open source. Uh, for the same reason you use an open source encrypted uh, encryption software, you, you're going to read the source code and make sure there's no backdoors in it, right? So that's the reason you use open source software for these purposes. Okay, so let's choose a password. All right, so I pasted my password in and I'm not choosing any of the other options. However, I will say that if you're ever mailing a hard drive through the mail or carrying it on a flight, use a, a PIM file or a key file have that on a separate drive, on a separate uh, mailing system, or on a different person, so that both keys have to come together for the drive to be decrypted, even if it's the non-hidden drive. And then, of course, have a, a key, a second key for the hidden drive. All right, so we're going to choose our file format here, and we have three to choose from. I'm going to choose Mac OS Extended, but use whichever one's best for you. And we're going to choose quick format just to make things go faster. You should never choose quick format because it doesn't uh, fully encrypt the device by default. Uh, however, if you have a big hard drive that's terabytes in size, it could take days to get it fully encrypted. So for the sake of time, we are doing the quick format option. No super secretive information or 
uh, valuable information will be stored on this drive. It's just for testing purposes and learning purposes. We'll read our warning. And it's just telling you to be careful with that hidden volume. So we're going to choose XFAT and see what those options are. Don't really like those either. But we are taking time to read about them. And now we'll just go back to Mac OS Extended and commit. And I'm going to choose Mac OS only, but choose what's best for you and your organization. In some ways, by limiting the OS, you're actually making it a little less likely that this drive will be uh, ever successfully deciphered by an adversary. So now we're encrypting the outer volume format and we're doing some randomness from mouse movements. And we can see the pool content that's going on here. That's enough randomness for this testing video. So we'll go ahead and click format, commit to erasing all the data that's on the disk, which is nothing because it's new. And so we'll just go ahead and click yes, but we do take time to read these boxes. And now we wait. Okay, it's been formatted and we click okay. So now our volume, and this is the non-hidden volume, is just about ready to be tested. In this screen, we can see that the outer volume has been successfully created and it'll give instructions on what type of data put, to put in here. In general, it's data that you're okay getting released, that looks authentic, that gives you plausible deniability. So let's go ahead and open our outer volume and put in some good test data. So we'll go ahead and create a new folder in here and do just that. In this case, I'm going to copy and paste a folder full of Amazon receipts that look like finance data and because they're receipts and put them into this folder. So this is our non hidden volume. We'll update the spelling on that root folder and we are ready to go forward with our next steps. Okay, so out of volume has been done. We can click next to create our hidden volume. And this is where the rubber meets the road. So make sure you take time, block time on your calendar to read about the documentation so you can understand the difference between your non-hidden volume, which is the outer volume, and your hidden volume, which is the inner volume. So in this case, we're going to do an AES two fish serpentin serpent uh, cas cipher cascade, and you can read about these over here and check out what the hash algorithms are. So for example, we have the SAH256 hash algorithm, which was designed by the NSA. And there's just more information on this. So Google's your friend, learn about these. Uh, it's, it's pretty interesting to deep dive this stuff in my opinion. The more you know, the better your operational security protocols and toolbox can be. All right, so we've chosen our encryption algorithms and our hash algorithm. Now we're gonna enter our hidden volume size. And in this case, we're gonna go into gigabytes and choose a value that we know is less than the max size of our external drive. So in this case, we do wanna see what happens when we click use all available free space and that grays out our next button because it's a hidden volume. Uh, so let's do our 100 gigabytes option again, click next. And now we got to remember never to put more than 100 gigabytes on here or it will just mess things up. So now we go back to our password manager 
and if you're not in a testing environment, you have like a separate password manager or a at least a separate encrypted file within your KeePass X password manager with your hidden volume passwords. And this is where you're gonna generate your maximum 128 character password and paste that in. Same information as key files as before or a PIM. If you're ever mailing mm -hmm. this or traveling with it, always use a key file or if you just wanna be extra secure. For this purpose of testing and demonstration, we're not gonna set that up, uh, but there's plenty of information on how to do that uh, if you look around. Okay. So that's an example of what happens if you try to use the same password for the outer volume and the hidden volume. It just totally defeats the purpose. And I wanted to show that here so that people can see what happens. So now, of course, we will generate a new password for the hidden volume that is different from the outer volume. And we will paste that in. Now that that's done, we will click Next. Uh, we are going to be potentially hosting files that are larger than four gigabytes, so we'll choose that. And again, we are going to go with a Mac OS extended file system. Choosing next, and we are not going to choose cross platform support. We're going to do our mouse thing again here and click format. Data is now formatting and we've done our mouse thing and we used editing to go fast so now our volume has been successfully created and we're going to read our disclosure here which is protect the hidden volume and now we're ready to use it uh, or create another one so we're gonna go over here and we will mount. So let's go ahead and select our device, scroll down and we can see our dev, our disk 6S1. We will click mount, paste in our password. And this is the password for your outer volume or inner volume will work here, whichever one you wanna open. They're on the same drive. So if you're in a situation where you need to open the outer volume do that so this is the outer volume right concepts are confusing to you that is okay it takes time to get to learn them they're ab abstract and make sure you're taking time to read the documentation and really take time to uh, do your best to comprehend it all alrighty so let's mount the hidden volume and we are back on dev our disk s or 6 s1 and we have pasted in the hidden volume password and we are just waiting for it to decrypt. So once that's done, the first thing I'm gonna look at is the size and I can see the size is at 99 gigabytes and that's just one gigabyte less than what I set it as. So that's an easy way for me to remember, hey, this is my hidden volume. There's also no data in here. I haven't put any data in it yet. So we are going to create a new folder and we will give it a name like data and we can put some test data in there. So we've gone ahead and dragged and dropped a screenshot of some test data into the hidden volume. We can see it's this cat photo from the internet because what better to put in basically the most advanced encrypted drive than a photograph of a cat. I think it would be so fun for me if a adversary got this drive and did the impossible uh, which is decrypt it and get a photograph of a cat so in any case we can go ahead and mount the in volume one more time make sure our cat photo is there 
and that's what we're doing now. So we're back on uh, dev r disk six s one, and we pasted in our hidden volume password, and we are just waiting for it to decrypt. We see our size is right. We click into that. We can see our data folder. We see our screenshot. It's a cat photo again. Everything's right in the world. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.